So again, let's start from scratch. Uh, welcome to 40G Live uh, every Thursday, last Thursday of each month. I go online uh, to tell you what is going on at 40G School of Photography, to review your images, to make some announcements and basically to talk to you about uh, things that, uh, well, we want to discuss whatever is happening in the uh, photography world, okay? I'm Alex Kalaskov, the founder of 40G School of Photography. So, today we had some little hiccup, but now we should be good. Let me... Mm -hmm. Okay. First of all, tomorrow we're going to have Jewelry webinar, okay, online webinar, uh, Jewelry for e-commerce, where I'll be showing uh, how to shoot uh, Jewelry on a white background. Uh, I'll, I'll show you a little bit uh, some little tricks, uh, something that, uh, you know, will be part of the workshop. I'll show you right now. We'll talk about uh, jewelry photography. It's an interesting topic, I'm sure. And especially the topic uh, is about white background, basically uh, e-commerce uh, type of photography, jewelry photography, where you need to shoot you as a photographer. You need to shoot many items uh, on short period of time because this is how you make money, right? Uh, you make it uh, on volume when you do catalog work. It's not creative work, it's all about making things right the fastest possible way, right? So this is what uh, we'll be doing. Yes, uh, thank you, Mohammed. Thank you, Claudia. Yes, sound is great. And it's super cool that I found it. I see now, okay. And uh, the workshop is, will be happening is here, okay. The registration link is which corner? This, yeah, just under my video, okay. You will see the page. We closing the registration tonight, basically, because tomorrow uh, it will be gone. You will receive a link, you join online, and uh, I have my jewelry ready over there, and we'll be shooting it. So if you want to join, actually today is a cool thing, uh, because you can uh, use this code, okay, start now and have 35% off on anything on 40G, including the jewelry workshop. So why not, right? It's a cool thing. 35% off on everything for 24 hours uh, with the code start now, one word. Okay? Now, let's talk about jewelry, jewelry photography. Uh, one second, jump in here. You've seen the well, first of all, how many of you uh, were doing it, have some experience, or at least had clients, you know, who were you trying to do something? Uh, I'm monitoring right now YouTube, okay? So YouTube Live, uh, this is the chat where you can talk to me. Yes, uh, thank you, Herman, uh, sound is good now. Yeah, it's super clear, and uh, this is how it's supposed to be. Okay, Giorgio, you work like, like what? Like jewelry photographer or like, like I'm doing right now on 40G Live? So if you had some experience, just let me know because I, uh, I'm interested to, to know, you know what, uh, what the experience of you guys. I see Mohammed, you had client. So question, what was the most um, challenging what was the most challenging for you when we were trying to shoot jewelry? What, uh, what it was? Because it's funny, I remember my first uh, jewelry client and it was a relatively large client. I mean, we had, I don't know, like maybe 50 items, um, very different items. It was uh, all of them we shoot on white background, on creative background, and it was really expensive uh, items. And actually, the price point that I set for this shot was 
that time is really kind of higher than anything I had. And what we were doing, I was making lots of mistakes. I was shooting uh, things, and since time is important, well, it's always important, right? Uh, I was making those mistakes. I didn't have time to fix them in the camera, and uh, we saved the whole project with Photoshop, actually. So, Genia Larionova, uh, my wife, and uh, she's a retoucher. Uh, well, she made the rest, whatever I was kind of, I wasn't able to, to, to shoot, I mean, to do in the camera. Uh, but we did have time for this, and we did have budget, because, like I said, it was uh, kind of, it was really high. It was about, uh, I don't know, 20, 24,000 or something for one week of work. It was good money, you know, the time. It's, it's actually, any time it's good money, right? Uh, so we covered everything. But um, I learned many things after that. Well, it was, how many, like, about probably eight or ten years ago. Uh, and uh, now we see how, you know, how bad I was at the time. So, uh, Theodore saying uh, the reflections. Well, the reflections is everything, right? About reflections. Okay, let's talk about reflections. Hanging and fixing something. Cool thing. Uh, I'll talk about this right now. Okay, hanging things. Super. And reflections. So, I'll, I'll show you what I did for this workshop specifically uh, and why I did. Well, it's, it's not about workshop, it's about uh, shooting jewelry. Uh, let me show you one second. Mm, yeah. Okay, so you see this, right? It's very little plate, one more plate. And this is what I'm using to shoot jewelry on a white background. And the cool thing is behind, do you guess what is this? What those little tablets are? It's about, you know, fixing things and hanging. Uh, this is uh, for, for rings, okay? And this is what uh, I use to shoot rings. So I'm wondering uh, if you will guess what it is and uh, how I'm using it. And another question, why it's that narrow? Why it's this little? Why I don't use, uh, let's say, white plexiglass like this, but white? I have plenty of them. Why it's so small? What's the reason? Anyone will guess? And actually, I have transparent with a pin. Magnet. Beautiful. Uh, search ends here. Cool, uh, Nick. So, yes, this is magnets. And what I'm using is this. I'm using the little gooseneck. Okay. Uh, it's, it's a holder. Uh, it was a little clamp here. But I use it to clip on this little table, sort of like, right, tabletop, little plate. Uh, it's uh, that uh, neodymium, neodymium magnet, whatever you call it, uh, very serious magnet. And uh, they sell it with a uh, little sticky pad, so it's super cool. I can stick it to any surface. And uh, since there is metal inside this gooseneck, I fix it this way. This goes to the stand, okay? This goes to the stand that I have in front of the camera. This is super cool setup because, first of all, I can easily adjust the position of a jewelry piece without, well, unscrewing anything. Well, it's like without touching much, right? It, it's very nice and it's very flexible. Okay, Mohammed, beautiful answer to the uh, second question that I had. One second, let me do one thing. I won't pop up this um, chat, so it will be hanging with me all the time. I will see it. One second, guys. Okay. Yes, Morton Magnets, uh, you know it too. So, this is Magnet. This is the fixture. What's cool about this? I can have, let's say I need to shoot hundreds of items per day, right? I have a assistant, one or two or whatever, just one at least. I may have like three or four of them, right? The same plates with the same magnet. I can have an assistant while working on one item, fixing another one, and then we'll be replacing it with exactly the same angle. Put it, 
and shoot and she or he will be preparing uh, another one. It's super cool. It's, it just you know costs nothing and uh, it's it's very um, effective solution I think. When we shoot it, okay, let's jump on next one. Next question. Why it's that small? Uh, Mohammed definitely with experience, with good experience in jewelry photography. Yes, it's to reduce reflection, reflection from the table. And uh, let me let's do this. Uh, where is my wax? We all know, right, about wax. One of the things, it's not only thing that we can use, but it's probably the most, um, how do you call it, common use fixture for the jewelry. It's dental wax. And uh, this is how you're going to fix it. Of course, I never touch it with bare hands. Always glows. I use Neutral glows. Uh, they, don't, they don't have powder as latex I may have. So I mount it like this. Okay? I mount it like this. You will see in a moment, uh, let me switch to different layouts. So you will see what I'm talking about. Okay. Do you hear me here? Yes, it should be fine. So. Let's let's do this. This is how I mount it, right? In front of the camera. Okay. And you do see what camera is seeing. This is live view, basically. Let's set the focus. Okay. This is some crappy, you know, jewelry which it's not good at all, but for education purpose, it looks great. So, why uh, this little plate? You can see on the screen, uh, I will show you just pointing to correct area. This is the area. This side is what reflects this. You understand, right? Lower reflection, so you cover this and get beautiful reflection on the side of your ring from this side. But imagine, imagine that I would have, uh, where it is, like a table like this, okay? See what is going on with the reflection. You see the large reflection, large part of the ring, reflecting the table now, if it would be larger. And when we do nice highlights, guys, when we do nice highlights with the gradients, with everything that we do by putting a diffuser between the light and uh, our jewelry, right? It's not possible on this area. And the area that I will work on will be like just a half of the side, half of the side, you know, top portion. But now with this little plate, I do have huge area and only little little piece that is on, on the bottom reflects the table so it led me to control the reflection around the ring i can control it by putting whatever i want dark bright something light or whatever right and well this is one of those tricks that i promised <laughs> to show you i don't know how many of you use this but uh, when I figure out this way to shoot, it was like, wow, it's so easy. It's so easy to do it. Okay. Uh, what else I can show you what you'll be doing tomorrow at Jewelry Workshop, okay? A Jewelry Workshop that is, you still can register. Uh, this is online workshop. Uh, this is the link, okay, uh, 40g.com slash school slash jewelry, and uh, you do have uh, the workshop page where I can register, you still can register. And the cool thing about everything that if you will use the code start now, you will have 35% off, okay, on the registration cost. And uh, about workshop, if you can join if you cannot join for some reason, but you were registered, you will receive the recording. The whole recording, it will be 
you know, a little bit there. It will be the same way we communicate through the chat. Chat will be, you know, right for me, and I'll be answering your question you know, in real time I'm working on this. So, hi Charles, I see, I see now. Cool. Okay, what is YouTube saying me? I don't need to know this for now. <laughs> okay, uh, Georgie is asking, uh, that's a cool idea. Um, do you use also a mirroring support plate? Uh, you're talking about the mirror. Well, no, For, or at least maybe this is something that I don't know about. If you're talking about, you know, completely glossy uh, surface to shoot, no reason, well, for all this, no. You know, when we shoot generally on a white background, of course we will shoot it uh, on a white background, but uh, we still clip it out of it, right? We, we don't play with, you know, highlighting everything, making it like out of the camera, uh, completely white. Uh, this is not what, uh, what we do, because when we shoot it right, when we shoot it right, it's super easy to clip it, you know, just outsource, outsource complete clipping, because it's not a feather, right, it's a jewelry, uh, it's, I don't know, from one to maybe five dollars maximum to clip it, uh, if you outsource uh, somewhere, you know, to other countries that cost not much, right? I think this is the best way to deal with this. Now, uh, styling special necklaces, uh, Mohammed, no, this is, you know, uh, styling is not a part of this workshop. It will be all about uh, jewelry or for e-commerce because we have courses, you know, we have online courses where we have uh, beautiful stuff uh, on ProClub for some of this jewelry. Uh, the styling, uh, we have uh, some creative backgrounds, all this already done. There is no reason for me to do it again. What we have missing on 40G courses is that e-commerce, so completely white background, uh, repeating the same, exactly the same angle uh, for each, uh, let's say if you shoot rings, it should be exactly the same uh, angle, right? I'll show you how to do this. It's super easy, you know, you just do it in the camera uh, and you don't need to do anything in Photoshop, you know, all the rotation. Uh, when you do overlay, you know, I'll be using uh, remote software to shoot all this. Uh, I'll be using Sony remote, since I'll be shooting this camera remote, uh, I mean, the Sony camera. But I suggest to use Capture One if we talk about, uh, you know, any camera, basically. Capture One has a great tools. I mean, it's, it's a great program, especially for remote shooting. Really, I mean, I, I love it. I just you know, don't need it, <laughs> but I used to use it, uh, super cool thing. Uh, how do you get smooth black gradients on jewelry? Well, it's not black, it's from black to bright, right? This is how you do uh, all your stuff for jewelry, well, the gradient, right? Well, uh, walk. As on any surface that we that is glossy. We do it, I'll show you right now, not a problem. I'll show you like this. Okay. Uh, let's put this ring back in front of the camera. Okay. So how do I get smooth gradient? Let's say we have a light, right? Uh, we, well, it's a little bit, little bit different light that I probably will need, but I'll show you in a moment. So, if let's say we have a light, right? Light on this side. How do you do the gradient? You put a diffuser, man. You put a diffuser between your light and your glossy subject. Well, actually, no, it's probably It'll be too much for, for me to do the whole thing for you, but I'll show you with my uh, tricky thing, uh, with the little trick that I use to get all this done. So I put a diffuser, okay? I put a diffuser on this side. 
And you do you see on the reflection, yeah, you definitely see how it affected the reflection, right? How it affected the reflection. And then I use the light from here and to make it gradient, let me make it right now with the flashlight. This is actually a very cool thing to determine where you put the light. Before you start, you know, jumping with the <laughs> light, you just use flashlight and see, you know, live view, see what is going on. So this is my gradient. Lots of light here. You see how sharp angle? I put it like a really sharp angle to the diffuser. Not like this, but like that. So on this area, it will be really bright, as you can see. And then it will be darker, darker, darker. And if I do it correctly, if I have enough large, uh, large diffuser, enough, it will be relatively dark area here. Okay, and this is our gradient. This is how we do it. Okay, we can do it this way or that way, whatever we decide, whatever we want uh, the lighting to be. Okay, and then we learn which, you know, what diffuser we need to put there, there, and here we go. <clears throat> so this is about uh, smoothing gradients. Okay, and again, tomorrow is the webinar if you want to join it. It's time to do it right now because we're closing the registration tonight at uh, 12 uh, a.m. 28th, okay, Pacific time. Uh, if you use start now code, you will have 35% off discount on this Julie webinar. And uh, again, you will have a recording after that. So if, even if you don't, were not able to watch it, you can uh, get the file and then uh, see everything. So. This is about smooth gradients on any glossy surface. Let me ask you this before I start answering. We'll be doing Q&A right now. We'll be kind of getting really close to this. Oh man, here, here question. So one more question from me, guys, and I'll kind of close it to QA. I mean, switching to QA mode. Uh, tell me this. How do you deal when you do focus stacking, because part of the workshop I'll be doing focus stacking in real time. I'll be shooting uh, Thethered, you know, it will be connected to the laptop, and I will use Adobe Photoshop to do from six to eight images focus stack, at least for the, for the rings, okay? Not much, I, I, I really uh, like to minimize um, amount of images and the result is great. You probably have seen it on uh, Instagram. I was posting, you know, just a screen share a little bit. But uh, let me ask you this. When you do focus stacking, uh, did you see ever, uh, you probably did, on probably any software, there are some issues sometimes when some part of your subject gets blurry. I mean, it's kind of software couldn't stack it and some area has like a blurry spot. You've seen it, right? Uh, did you ask in, uh, the member of ProClub? No, this is not a, not a ProClub workshop. ProClub workshop we just released, uh, it, it's a different uh, shot, was the candy, exploding candy, right? You've seen it if you in ProClub. ProClub has 50% off discount though. So if you're on ProClub, go to your dashboard, generate the code, there is a button for this, right? Um, if you're there. This is how you generate, okay, there is a button, you click create my 50% off coupon and uh, it will work for 24 hours and one, one, you kind of you get it instantly, well, probably like 30 seconds, one minute, yeah, it's gone, I mean, it's done, uh, it's sent, well, on this case, it will be on my uh, account, but uh, you do the same, so here is my code, I can, after refresh, I can even grab from here, apply it to anything, and it will give me 50% off, okay? 50% uh, off uh, to, let's say, this jewelry workshop, right? Um, coupon, oops, it didn't go, why? Oh no, it did. Here we go, 60, oops, $62, cool stuff. So, about focus stacking, guys, focus stacking. How we deal with that issue? I'll cover it. I found a cool way. You probably, well, experience, if you experience enough, you, you should know. Um, the issue with focus stacking, this kind of issue, happens when 
there is not enough contrast areas on stuck images and uh, software just do, do, doesn't understand that there is some edge that should be sharp and couldn't stuck it. This is how at least I understood it or I'm kind of imagined that it's happening under the hood of the software. And I found that if we'll put nice and black reflections on the edges, on those problematic area, I mean, where we have these issues after focus stacking, because I shoot, I stack it and see, okay, everything looks fine, so I go to next one. If rings are the same, uh, once is okay, I mean, same or very similar shape, but sometimes you really need to check before you remove the ring if stacking will work, because it will be really, well, you still can do it manually, right? It's okay, but if it's low volume, it's, it's cool to, you know, stack and see. For me, it takes one minute to, to do stacking. So there is a way in many cases, in many, not always, depending, depending on where it is, you know, where, if we can catch a reflection or not, but because we shoot on a white background and the ring is bright and white, you know, it's uh, glossy metal, uh, in many cases it's white metal, white gold or whatever, bright and bright, and software just give up. So you do have some little piece of something black, <laughs> black cardboard, black screen, you put it somewhere, to catch a reflection from it on the edge, and it fixes all the issues. First of all, it looks great. On the edges, little you know, black, uh, black reflection is beautiful. But when you do this and do focus stacking, you know, the sequence, it looks perfect. So it's a really cool thing. <clears throat> I just bought it, I think I did it wrong. Uh, Mohammed, if you bought it full price or whatever, uh, it's okay, we'll, uh, Send the email to support, so not a problem. If you're in Pro Club, we'll figure out. Okay, we'll do partial refund or we'll give you some uh, other discount, whatever you'll choose. No worry, we are with you. Okay, so this is what uh, we'll be doing tomorrow. Tomorrow, 1 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, you join it online, you watch it, you will see it through the camera as just uh, we're showing to you. Uh, you will see the chat and everything in between, okay? Uh, you will actually see the um, laptop screen as well, because uh, I'll be, uh, you know, when, when I do focus stacking, actually one more thing I, I want to tell you, uh, when I do, I don't touch camera at all. It's not a good idea to do, you know, there is, uh, how you call it, that sliding play, for oh, good, you know, the, the plate that slides camera, or you rotate it, I forgot, sorry, my brain is not really working well, but anyway. I never, I mean, I, I have it there, but I use it for completely different reasons when I need to just pull away camera a little bit. I couldn't imagine how you can do a normal focus stacking if you will rotate anything. Even the focusing ring of your camera, if you rotate it manually, it's not a good idea because it slightly will change something, you know, you, 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 you might be trembling, whatever. And it may affect your result. And it's not good. So it's, the best thing is not to touch camera at all. This is why uh, these uh, Capture One and, uh, for example, Sony, they can control focus remotely. And it, this is a simple solution. I know there is uh, Helios, Helicon, Helicon, right? So hardware where it kind of will move with the camera and all is cool, but refocusing camera works the same way. You know, at least Photoshop is completely fine with this and it, it doesn't make any difference. I didn't find any difference and I talked to other photographers uh, who do this professionally. They have no problem with um, refocusing camera instead of moving it back and forth for focus stacking. So, we do it remotely. And it's very important. I just, you know, press, click, 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 and do shots through those, uh, you know, steps. It's super easy, super cool. Uh, you just see it, you kind of, you are the computer, it shoots there. It's, it's beautiful. I'll show you how to do this. Micro position sliding plate. Yes, micro position uh, sliding plates. Yeah, I think I have, uh, well, this is Manfrotto, it's, it's a different thing. Um, um, Nova, Nova Flex, Nova Flex, cool stuff, but completely useless because it's very stiff and like I said, I, I'm sure I shouldn't touch the camera, the best results. 
Okay, now let's do a question and answer. So ask me anything. Uh, you can ask me about uh, that upcoming workshop. Again, uh, I see people are coming, guys. Tomorrow we do have a workshop uh, jewelry for e-commerce where I'll be showing how to shoot, you know, stuff like this. Uh, images on a white background, uh, rings, earrings. We can, if you have time, uh, we can do necklaces. Uh, I have all kind of things uh, here ready for you. We'll be shooting for at least three hours in real time, uh, chatting with you, showing you through the camera. Uh, well, and you have about 11 hours left. Actually, it's 10 hours left for the registration, okay, if you want to register. And if you would use uh, the code, well, this is the where you register, right? Uh, slash school slash jewelry. And if you will use the code start now, it's 35% off, okay? Cool thing for you. So, questions. If you have anything to ask me uh, about uh, jewelry, photography, and uh, about the workshop, uh, this is the right time for, for you to do. You see, I was kind of thinking, hey, uh, I can review things on 40G. Facebook group, this beautiful group that we have some beautiful images. By the way, this is our uh, Pro Club workshop, uh, latest Pro Club workshop. If you didn't see it, go and check. Uh, cool stuff we, we got uh, with Artem Pisarevsky. It was so extensive post-production. Anyway, it's on ProClub, uh, 42.com slash pro. So instead of reviewing, let's, let's, you know, let's talk uh, Q&A about uh, jewelry photography, right? OK. So let me open both chats, Facebook and YouTube, because we do broadcast on uh, Facebook as well. So. Uh, do you use uh, UV filters or polarizer? Why only on lights? I don't use UV filters. I don't believe in them, at least in studio and actually outside. I never use them. I don't think it's a good thing. Well, for protection only. No, I don't use it. I use polarizers. Uh, it won't be again on this workshop because there is no reason uh, when you shoot for e-commerce, it's, it's different. It's a high volume shot, so you need to do it fast and it should look good, uh, good enough. And actually, really, it's, it's, it's a rare situation. It's for, you know, polarizer. We have actually the course uh, for this, if you check. Uh, 40G, uh, you know, courses. Uh, there is a polarizing in jewelry. How it's called? Pol polarized light. Secrets of polarized light in jewelry photography. It's a super cool course, really. That well, there is a video teaser where I was showing how to use this, and we are shooting some beautiful things, and we were using polarized filters on a light. And on the camera, if you're asking about this, on the light and on the camera. Otherwise, it's not effective. Well, without filter on the camera, nothing works, right? But with only filter, yeah, it affects the areas that are glossy and most jewelry glossy. But it's not all the light is polarized. You understand? When glossy surface reflects the light, it polarizes it, right? This is why polarized filters start working and making difference on the, on the surfaces, like water or metal or gemstone. However, it's just a part of the light is polarized. The rest is not affected at all uh, by your filter. But if you use polarized film on the light, 100%, well, almost, uh, ideally 100, but there is no ideal word on this, but like 80, 90%, depending on quality of your polarized film, of the light will be polarized and you control it completely. It's a beautiful thing. Again, if you look at that course, it's, it's a magic. It's like you, you completely can turn on or off one of the lights on specific surface for specific angle, angle by rotating the polarized filter. It's, it's super cool. You can see through the, uh, through the gemstone. This is, again, it's a magic. When you have, uh, you know, the external reflection, let's say gemstone, some large uh, chunk of, you know, beautiful something sits in front. And you see the, I mean, <laughs> it's in front. You see the reflection uh, on the front surface and there is nothing, you know, there is not much facets. It doesn't look good. It's like a blind spot. 
with polarized light, you turn, you know, the filter, and boom, like on this gemstone, you st start seeing through it. It becomes transparent. Only this surface. The rest is visible because it's different angle of polarization. Well, I'm not going to jump on this. I can talk hours, but it's a cool thing. Uh, check out. This is not. This is really good course. And again, you can use Start Now code to uh, to have 35 percent off. Today it will work uh, only for 24 hours. This code on any course. So yes, uh, why on lights? This is why on lights. Uh, then will be the post-production as well. No, for the workshop, it won't be post-production, okay? The post-production will be a part of a large course that is coming after that. I don't know, did you see our announcer or not? Uh, you know, I was sending emails. I'm working on the way more expensive jewelry, expensive than, more expensive than these, uh, you know, pieces that I'll be using uh, tomorrow. And uh, we'll, I will cover way more. Uh, for example, tomorrow we'll be shooting with relatively simple lighting setup. Uh, with the, on the course, I'll show you different lighting setups. The same idea for e-commerce, but it will be way more uh, things to cover, way more hours. And um, it will be post-production, full post-production included. This webinar is just like a part of that course. And again, for people who uh, later will decide to buy that course, this webinar will be completely free because we will offset uh, the price. Whatever you paid for the webinar will be discounted from the course price. Of course, it will be more expensive. Of course, it will be way more hours. Like I said, it will be full post-production. So if you really in jewelry photography, for you, the best way to jump on the webinar, see everything, you can communicate with me, right? Uh, on the course, it's not that easy. It's pre-recorded. Uh, tomorrow, you can talk to me. Uh, you can ask some you know, particular questions, for example, about uh, your gear, your particular gear, what you want to use, you know? Uh, what you want to buy, what do we need to buy, or whatever. And then when course will come, we, you will have a discount on the course equal to the price you paid for the webinar, for the workshop, the tomorrow workshop. So it will be free for you. you it's a super cool thing. Uh, okay. It's about post-production. How many light sources uh, do we need? Three should be enough. You know, two is the minimum. It, it's hard to shoot with two. But if I, you know, do some tricky stuff, two will probably will work, but it's hard. It will be, you know, limited. Three is, should be okay. You can use up to five, whatever, and sometimes. But three is, is good. It's good. And the cool part that uh, with Jewelry, you can use uh, continuous lighting as well. Sometimes continuous lighting is uh, very less expensive than strobes and you have uh, no problem with the power. Because sometimes when you shoot, let's say, I shoot about F13, uh, sometimes F16, uh, shoot generally, I need to have a relatively good amount of flash power to get through ISO 100, you know, 160 of a second shutter speed, F13 or F16. And if it's not enough, it will be a problem. If, let's say, I would have only speed lights, it may be an issue for me. I need to raise my ISO. Not a big deal, but still. With brown colors, I have plenty of power. But if you would use continuous lighting, you just increase what? shutter speed, right? You increase shutter speed and you have as much... I mean, it depends. It doesn't matter how bright your light source is. Shutter speed will fix it, right? Okay. <clears throat> Next question. Uh, will you be using a variety of strobes? Variety, you mean different brands? No, I'll be using this brown color, different light modifiers, but I can tell you it will be mostly uh, just the spotlights. Spotlight, uh, either Fres Fresnel lens or the uh, honeycomb grid, and it should be enough. That's Again, the lighting will be as simple as possible because the whole idea of the e-commerce shots, we shoot it fast, we shoot it easy. We don't need to do, you know, some crazy thing. Uh, does discuss paperwork releases contracts? No, this workshop no. We have it. Uh, we have it on Pro Club. We have uh, uh, other courses, but no, this workshop is. Uh, it's about lighting for white background for jewelry for e-commerce, right? So the idea is to show you how much you can do within the camera 
uh, to minimize your post-production time. So everything should be uh, looking really nice. And um, again, uh, watch on uh, Instagram. I have uh, videos where I was showing you the... Actually, I even have it here somewhere, right? I can show you. Yeah, it's here. Uh, let's bring Photoshop here. The, this is the example shots that we are playing uh, in preparation for this uh, webinar. So this is just after focus stacking, you know. The cool stuff like, for example, uh, you see at the bottom. One second. Uh, this uh, nice S chord line, right? You can, when you know how to do stuff, let's say you can, you have these reflections, you, you jump and then you make them smaller, uh, thicker, uh, or just crazy like this, you know, bad look. Uh, this is not, not a good shot at all because, uh, well, it's, it's sort of okay, but for example, uh, one of the mistakes when you see uh, inside reflection bed like this, it's, it, it will be tons of work uh, in, in Photoshop to make nice s curve. Anyway, this is what, uh, what we did, some of the stuff. And uh, you, you can see how many uh, stacked images we had. For example, here it was only six, right? Only six images. the super simple focus stacking. And then I just increase brightness, and this is it. Okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, can you review the new Godox uh, flash with modeling light uh, for product photography? Well, Godox V1, let me take a look. What is this Godox V1? Oh, I see, I see now. This is Godox. <laughs> I see. So it's like a speed light, but serious speed light. Well, you see, uh, it's definitely good light. I mean, it's, it's a cool light, but it's made not for product photography. You basically will be paying uh, for something that is not needed for product photography, for in-studio work. Things like TTL. We use manual exposure on the camera. We use manual uh, exposure on the lights. We need to control it completely. There is no uh, way for artificial intelligence to help us on there. It's all here. So you'll be paying for this, right? And um, it's a little bit. If you will be using only for studio, this is probably not a good light because you can have for, for, for the same money uh, more power without all these uh, cool features like TTL and other things. However, or even the high speed they have, cool. But if you shooting both, Outside, you know, if you shoot people, yeah, this is will work definitely. Not a problem. This light will work for studio. Not a only think about light modifiers. Is it sort of pro photo? I mean, can you put pro photo lighting uh, the light mods on it? What kind of mount it is? I don't know. If they have some sort of adapters to work with, well, probably they they compete with pro photo, right? So if pro photo will work, well, you can use softbox and all this stuff. We don't use lights like this in studio, bare lights, right? Okay, let's see in those questions. Um, will you be showing errors and mistakes? Uh, of course, well, I'm making lots of mistakes <laughs> all the time. And uh, yes, yes, definitely. Uh, you know, this workshop and actually the whole course, this workshop that we guys are having tomorrow, if you just join us, Check it out the link below uh, this link to register because it will be jewelry workshop for e-commerce. Anyway, the idea came uh, from uh, Piotr. I'm not going to tell his uh, name, but one of our students, a great photographer actually, we will feature him, amazing portfolio. And uh, he had a client, a jewelry client with uh, 
many relatively expensive uh, jewelry pieces. And uh, he came to me asking, hey, Alex, what kind of course you will suggest? It will be e-commerce on a white background. And I start looking on footage and just like, wow, we don't have it. You know, we have jewelry courses, polarized, some luxury jewelry, luxury, all this, but nothing like simple on the white background for professional photographers. We have some, you know, webinars where we kind of, I was using some small lights. Uh, and then I, I decided to record this course and first, uh, you know, several lessons. Uh, I was working with Piotr. Um, I was uh, kind of shooting micro lessons for him, for the, his specific, he sent me what kind of angles uh, he his client want, everything, and I was kind of, um, um, like guiding him through the shot while he was shooting and I was shooting the same way, showing, you know, all the findings. So it was cool to find, you know, uh, mistakes, not only from me, but from Piotr. He was saying, hey, something I tried to repeat, this didn't work. And I was like, aha, this is why. And so it was cool. It was beautiful collaboration. Piotr, if you watch this, thank you again for this. Uh, and this is how, you know, the workshop and the course is born. So definitely mistakes. Uh, for each shop, you prefer shooting one shot for each jewelry or five, six shots and focus stack them for 200, 500 pieces, I mean. Uh, Charles, right? No, Charles, no. Okay, anyway, uh, top capture of photography. Well, I, when I was working with clients, I tried to shoot in a single shot. You need to see uh, what kind of, there are many factors. First of all, uh, what kind of high, uh, quality they need at the end. Sometimes they are uh, going to use, it's always depends on the budget, of course, you know, all this. Uh, sometimes they need to use it uh, later for big prints or from posters and they need the highest possible quality and the highest po possible uh, image size. And uh, this is probably where you need to fo use focus stacking. However, if they, let's say they say, hey, we need uh, it's for online, we need some shots for the print, let's say like 1% of the shots or, well, let's say five shots. We will be hero shots for whatever, for some ads. But the rest of 200, from those 200 to 500 pieces will be just online. Sometimes it's a really clever idea to shoot, first of all, to move camera a little bit away, sort of use a crop sensor. You don't need to have crop sensor camera for this. You just, you know, pull it away. Shoot f16 or even f18, you know, less magnification ratio, meaning smaller ring on your viewfinder, more depth of field you'll be getting from the same aperture. You know this trick, right? At f16, when you shoot one to one magnification, it will be whatever, let's say five millimeters depth of field. The rest will be blurry. If you pull a camera away two times more, so it will be, you know, smaller ring. With the same f16, you will have deeper depth of field, probably times, maybe more. I, I don't remember, is it like one-to-one -one relationship or not? And this is the beauty. You can crop the image, let's say uh, this camera, Sony i7R3, 42 megapixel, right? I can pull it away, I can shoot it and then crop, and at the end it will be the image, let's say 25 meg megapixel camera, sort of like, which is a couple years ago, it was more than enough. Very expensive commercial cameras had 25, 22, and you know, photographers were using them, clients, clients were happy. So it's not a problem. You shoot it this way, and there is a possibility to have whole thing in a focus um, at, like, like I said, f18 or whatever. You can always tweak a little bit, you know, the, you're losing the contrast, right? You're losing uh, uh, sharpness when you close aperture. But with the good lens, good lens, is the lens that can hold those qualities, sharpness and contrast for longer when they, you close aperture, it's possible to shoot it. So I prefer, I would prefer to shoot in single shot. But it, again, I need to kind of see client's requirements. Oh, so you're saying that I'm missing some comments. Okay, guys, now I'm jumping. Uh, Reviews. I'm jumping on, on Facebook, sorry. That the course is uh, on worn jewelry, but like still life. Is it question or one second? 
Uh, one second, guys. Sorry, I lost you guys on Facebook. Um, oh, Dustin, thank you. Thank you, Dustin, for did you help me to start my career in commercial photography. Uh, it, it means a lot to me. Thank you so much. Focus on rail, yeah. Super marker important, but product work, uh, you don't need uh, fancy hardware. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, Pro Club is the best. Okay. Uh, yeah, pull the camera back. Pull the camera back, exactly. Yeah, that's a cool idea. It was a question, Alex. So, Warren Jewelry. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, actually, yes, we had. You know, some, most of the jewelry, uh, it's not worn, but sometimes it's, it's heavy, you know, heavy scratches on uh, everything. It's always partially covered uh, on, on any cords that we have, like, uh, like luxury jewelry, for example, on this course, where is it? Uh, Luxury jewelry retouching, right? This is the course where we do have, it's not worn, it wasn't worn, but you can see the quality of those guys before the post-production, before and after. Um, some of them, well, it wasn't worn. So, answering your question. We, our first jewelry course, the very first, it was based on the workshop that uh, we had like eight years ago or something in Atlanta. It was recorded, and uh, then we add some lessons, and it was bad jewelry there, also. But the quality of the course, you know, quality of video production, everything is really bad, and we pull it away, we're not selling it anymore. Uh, if you want to get it, uh, we probably will have some really discounted price for you, just, you know, send email to support. Uh, if you're okay with some strange video production quality. Uh, Post-production, though, it's fine. It was fine. It was, you know, the same screen, uh, screen share, screencast, mm, but, uh, you know, the, the whole course. So, yeah, talk to us. Uh, there are Zoom M42 macro lens. I don't know, M42, uh, this is the mount, right? Um, you know, for jewelry, you don't need to have Zoom at all, right? And lenses for jewelry photography, yes, you need to have macro lens. But the cool thing that you don't need to have expensive macro lens. You, you may not need to have expensive macro lens uh, because you don't need to use autofocus. Uh, you don't need, for example, on this lens, it's beautiful 90, 90 millimeter Sony lens, right? One of the best macro lenses, actually. You can check, you know, this uh, uh, tests all around. It's cool. But it has stabilizer in it. It has, of course, uh, the focus and everything. I never used it, of course, when I shoot in the studio. Everything is off. It's manual focus. It's uh, no uh, IS. And uh, you probably can find a good, really good macro lens, uh, old one, sort of old, not really old, but still, uh, something that used to cost maybe, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars back then. And you can buy through the adapter. Uh, it will be completely manual lens, and probably it will be a really good lens. I don't know. It depends on the camera. I really not, you know, digging it. But maybe a Leica, maybe uh, something from medium format. I'm not sure, but they may have. You definitely can do. Yeah. Okay, guys. Uh, let's see. Any any other questions? Review. No, 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 no. What can we review here? It's it's already more than an hour. Right? <laughs> uh, let me again, if you joined recently, guys, tomorrow we do have a workshop called Jewelry for e-commerce, Jewelry Photography for e-commerce, where I'll be shooting 
rings and other pieces on the white background here in the studio and you watch the same way. Uh, registration closed at 12 a.m. tonight basically. You still have time. There is a link uh, that you can get, uh, you know, slash school slash jewelry. Uh, you registered and you will have downloaded a uh, version of it as well. Uh, you will have a chat. This is where you can ask me any question about your particular situation with gear or with whatever you want. We'll be shooting, we'll be doing focus stacking. No post-production for this, uh, but it will be the course after that. It will be a, a large course released. And if you buy the course, uh, the webinar will be free for you. We'll uh, put the money that you paid for the webinar uh, on your purchase on the course. So it will be basically no additional money for the, for the webinar portion. If you want to join, you can use the code start now. You see it under me to get 35% off the, on anything on 40G, but it will work only for 24 hours, okay? Awesome, thank you, Claudio. Yep, thank you. Uh, I'm going to review picture of the month tomorrow. Well, let's review it uh, today. Actually, it's a good idea to review pictures today. Hmm? You want review? We'll have review. Why not? This is what you're talking about, right? Am I right or am I wrong? Uh, we don't have much. Uh, this is what uh, we do like every month we review images submitted on pro club for the past workshops and uh, this is uh, some well some old workshop i don't remember let's see so there is image wow this is cool yes 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 i've seen it so this is how it looked like i remember yeah i was shooting <laughs> uh, this uh, completely glossy kettle right and this is your result uh your name is Swi switch Simch, Simch, right? Simch. So, wow, <laughs> it reminds me, you know, guys, um, one of our first uh, large clients was Walmart. We were shooting uh, for Walmart packaging. It was cool work for like a, maybe a little bit less than a year I was working with them. And we were shooting all kinds of things. But one of the sh uh, first shots, they send us kettles, not like this, it was um, like a cylindrical one, but completely glossy. And it was the first time I was working with them. And it was a representative came to the studio, so uh, she was sitting and I was shooting. She wanted to look, you know, how I work. And I remember that headache, I mean, it was first time, that completely glossy cylindrical kettle. And it, how I can... I mean, I, I knew many things already about, you know, diffusers, but I didn't have that large diffusers to cover all this. And it was crazy, but yeah, I built <laughs> that sort of like a white wall uh, from this, um, uh, it was, I think it was Savage already, or maybe not even Savage, just a white paper, uh, you know, highlighted it and uh, did the shot, but it was crazy. So what you did, Simch, is an amazing work for that glossy, thing uh you know what's cool wow you know what's cool that you managed to make it look glossy one of the biggest issues when photographers uh couldn't make it look glossy when it's too much diffusion and it looks like a plastic it looks matte just because it, there is no um uh, sharp cut of lines or when it's like uh, uh just everything is too soft here, first of all, you have sort of like a too soft, uh, this, uh, the, the frontal area, right? But you managed to get, first of all, all the reflections are there. You didn't clean them, and this is beautiful, you know, internal from the handle. Then you have this uh, bottom reflection from the nose, you know, which is sharp cutoff line. This is super cool thing. Actually, image, not, not much I can... Uh, um, Okay, how we call it? I can't tell I, bad things about it. Well, not bad. How about what to improve? Okay, not bad. What I'm talking about? Not many things to improve because it's really good. So what I'm talking about this line, okay? 
uh, this is the way that we create glossy look. Otherwise, it will look matte because matte surface would never reflect something with sharp cutoff line. It's always fuzzy, you know, the edge. Here it's sharp and you did it and it's awesome. I don't know, you did uh, have some reflection. It's probably natural. Maybe it would be a good idea just to make it darker. Or maybe, well, it's up to you. It, it looks really natural this way, so I'm not sure. Uh, I like it. I like it this way. Uh, what else? The smoke look like a smoke, not uh, a steam, unfortunately. Sometimes it's okay to have it like this, sometimes not. It's a hard question because I've seen, uh, even on some advertising, it looked like this. It looks kind of nice because it's very nice shape, but it really, it, it's, it, it not like a steamy. It's a little bit too smoky. So maybe you can add a little bit more blur, just slightly more. You, you can play, I'm not sure. Again, this is something that is hard to, to tell that this is bad or uh, good, but with all this, uh, you know, steam, maybe you can have it uh, slightly, uh, Anyway, slightly more blurry, so it will be a little bit more steamy. What else? Uh, maybe you can cut a little bit more from the bottom. Are you sure you need this area? Yeah, I know it's a brush, I'm sure. This is why it looks like smoke. It's a, it's a brush, yeah. It's sort of, you, you show the table, uh, it's okay. But, well, I don't know. Maybe just a little bit thinner. Maybe not. Again, this is subjective. What I would do, if you would ask my opinion, like, hey, Alex, what you would do different, I would make the wall behind darker. Really. It looks okay. I mean, nothing were wrong, but I would make it darker. Just to add dramatic, more dramatic look. It will be a little bit more poppy. It will be, you know, the fire uh, that glossy will be standing out a little bit more. Maybe this is my kind of a little bit skewed American way to see it because, well, I'm here for about 20 years, right? And in the US, we all want to have it, you know, bright and like, woo. If it's sweet, it should, it should be sweet. You're talking about cakes. Sweet as crazy, you cannot eat it. If it's salted, it's salted or crazy. So everything is like really maximized, you know, <laughs> like teenager type of thing. So, and in photography, we like this uh, style when it's like, bright, dramatic, uh, so this is what I would do. But even this way, it, it's really nice and soft, yeah. Uh, speed blur progression, uh, well, maybe, maybe, I don't know how to blur it. I would just slightly blur it, I don't know, yeah. Well, Photoshop is not my thing, right? It's Artyom will <laughs> tell you. Okay, uh, what else, what else, what else? No, it's all cool. Yeah, you see, you think it's too, too, uh, too dark. I would have like a sort of like a spot behind and the maybe vignetting. Try to add vignetting, you know, to sides without touching the brightness of the wall. Just to see how, may, maybe it's a bad idea. Maybe, not. I don't know. But it's cool, it's really good, it's really good. And uh, that fire, that propane blue, is it real? Or, it's probably not real, because it's hard to catch it this way. It's not an easy task, you know? <laughs> but looks good, looks really good. No, I think this is awesome work. Simch, thank you. Okay, guys, time to, to say goodbye, really. I mean, I, I, I enjoy your uh, time with you, I'm, I'm really, uh, but it's like hour and a half, what you can do. Yes, fire was added. It just looks like we need to talk more frequent than once per month, probably. So, okay, last thing. Yep, yeah. thank you, thank you. Last time I'm talking about this announcement that we run tomorrow, okay, a jewelry workshop here in the studio online at 1 p.m. Pacific time, you watch. You see how we do jewelry on the white background. This is how you register, okay? Slash school, slash jewelry. Uh, this is how you get 35% off, 
if you use the code start now tomorrow i'll see you uh, tomorrow will be an interesting day we'll be doing it for about three hours so i'm sure you will uh, enjoy it and this is where you registered okay uh, you know jewelry photography is still i think it's a huge market for photographers huge because there are so many uh, jewelry makers small one you know let me tell you last last piece before i tell you goodbye i tell you the story it's it's real time story i just had it uh, one week ago i was looking for jewelry for the workshop actually not for the workshop but for the course uh, that will be following uh, the workshop i need more expensive jewelry that i can buy on amazon okay because uh, you know on amazon for 20 dollars you can buy uh, really fake really nice looking fake stuff but if you shoot it macro then you know in post production it will be tons of work because some areas will look just really bad it, it's it's a fake it's, it doesn't have the quality on those little details where you know the holders how we call the holders for gemstones and many areas could look quite bad at high magnification so i need the high quality jewelry about you know between like a one thousand and ten thousand dollars price range with real diamonds you know i went to local jewelry stores i went to one store i said well how you can talk to the owner owner wasn't there i got a card and uh, i walked away i went to second one and i found the owner she was there i talked to her saying hey i'm a photographer i need i have such need and for you, uh, you it's like no money i i don't need money and i don't need, i don't want to pay money uh, so you will be getting the images the final images that you can use whatever you want like uh, unlimited license and uh, I, i'll need to borrow some jewelry that i'm going to pick up i mean we will we'll choose what we can get and she agreed and we got her here in the studio i was shooting things uh, one of this uh, that i was showing you on the in photoshop this is actually from that store this is real diamonds uh, this so some emerald or whatever don't ask me for the mm, uh, names for the gemstones but this is cool stuff and i was talking to her and you know she told me that she has images uh, for some of her uh, jewelry that she sell uh, from the manufacturer you know some those sort of images that you can use for uh, to advertise you know the store but there are many pieces where she need images and she has no idea where to find photographer she's kind of it was not like in real need but she would love to have these images because uh, it was, you know, some handmade, you know, some, some not really usual uh, jewelry. And she asked me like, hey, can you do this? And I just realized that, well, I'm not interested in taking uh, jewelry clients this time. We're on different business, right? It's a photography school, we, we teach, it's different. But if I would, bam, I mean, it's like, I, I can, go there are so many jewelry stores all around here in california it's i mean probably in your store, in your city the same have some jewelry short i mean buy something cheap but look nice spend time to shoot it spend time to retouch have a portfolio at least something go and talk to them you can start from very small uh, fees at the beginning but the cool stuff about jewelry jewelry makers and jewelry sellers that they do have, they communicate with each other, with each other a lot. I mean, if you will make a good job for one, it will be word of mouth and it will start working for you. I don't know, do you know the, uh, how his name? Viktor Walansky. We had an interview with him. A beautiful guy, he's amazing jewelry photographer. One of our past students uh, on 40G. We had an interview, I think a couple of years ago with him, and he went from a completely different job, he has different talents, to full-time jewelry photography by doing really custom and nice work. If you, well, let's search Viktor Walansky, you'll see them. Uh, 
our lens key or key uh, second. Uh, he's on Facebook. So, Jurli. As you can see, this is exceptional work. I mean, he's, he's really good at what he's doing. And you see the jewelry is not uh, something that uh, you can see on every store. This is custom made, hand made. Uh, this is uh, jewelry that jewelry clients, uh, you know, small businesses. It's like an owner who makes himself, herself all this. And they need a photographer for hero shots. He's doing this hero job for them. You can, you, can, you can search him. Again, we had an interview, uh, cool stuff. He even shared his part of 40G community. And he told me on the interview how he got there. He has a huge business now. I mean, lots of work. I don't know today, but you know, two years ago, it was just thriving. Good work for one, good work for another one, for relatively small money. And then people start coming to him because they were asking, they have this community and somebody got a good photos. They're like, wow, where did you get them? Here's a photographer. And they're okay sharing photographers. I don't know why. Sometimes it's like, no, I don't tell you, but they do in jewelry community, you know, jewelry makers. And then he said, well, guys, it's too much work for me. The price goes up and blah, blah, blah. And no, it's, it's, it make full-time job for him. So this is why it's important. <laughs> this is why I'm inviting you to this workshop, okay? Uh, this is something where we still have tons of work to do and still very low competition. Look for how many jewelry photographers all around you. You won't find. Uh, you, you won't find many. You, you can be one of them. Okay, guys, thank you so much. Join me on this workshop. Okay, this one, this one tomorrow. This one, this is the link. You still have how many night hours left? nine hours left before we close the registration. Use start now code to get 35% off. Bahrain, wow, Mohammed, cool. Thank you. And we'll do, well, I'll do what I can here in the studio for you, answering your questions, uh, shooting, uh, let's do as much as possible. Three hours or more, my time, tomorrow, okay? Thank you for joining. Next uh, time, well, we, I should see you next time, I should see you last Thursday of the month. But again, uh, I start reconsidering, maybe you need to do it uh, more often because I, I enjoy uh, conversation, guys. I, I love what I hear, what I see, <laughs> and what I know. It's almost like a Vita. Uh, Hector. We skip Facebook review today. Sorry, man. We skip Facebook review. I had one review of beautiful cattle from Pro Club. Alrighty. Thank you, guys. I have a good weekend. Have a good Friday, and then weekend. Talk to you tomorrow, and some of you will talk next month. Okay. Goodbye. Thanks, Robert. <laughs>